everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. It has been a wonderful month of studying melody. This whole summer and spring I've been planning on just sort of doing a foundational study of music theory and how it applies to the mountain dulcimer. We started off in May with rhythm. We continued this month with melody. Next month, July, we'll be looking at harmony. And then in August, putting everything, wrapping it up together and having some fun, plus some travel logs from being on the road. So this is going to be for all skill levels, as we've already looked at uh, elements and music for our beginner level, intermediate level, and advanced level students. Hopefully you guys are all back and checking this out. Our tune today is Loch Loman, so it's going to be easy enough for everybody, but also we got some things we'll be doing that are a little bit challenging as well. We are in D-A-D -D tuning as we have been for the rest of the month. We are in the key of D major, two sharps on the staff, F sharp and C sharp. Loch Lomond's a great old Scottish tune. You take the high road, I'll take the low road. Now I'll get to Scotland before you. So uh, what I'm going to do here is walk us through the tune, simply play it, and then we'll kind of mess with that in our heads for a while until we come back next month and add chords to it to see how it all works together. Of course, as we've learned this month, we're playing in a certain key, that's diatonic nature right there. We used to play in modes all the time, and then people smarter than me decided that we were going to play not using all 12 chromatic notes, but rather just seven notes because they're going to give us the best possible music. So we began playing in keys. We have a key signature that tells us what to do with those seven notes. What notes are sharpened, what notes are flattened, and what notes aren't touched at all. Out of those seven notes, we can write beautiful melodies and those seven notes can also be combined in different ways to create chords then that supports and harmonizes those melodies. That's how the whole thing works. So what we're going to do here is play the melody and the melody is just going to be restricted to those seven notes. melody for Loch Lomond, and a fine melody it is. So, let's look, let's analyze and see what we've got going on here. First of all, our first chord is D major, and our melody, our walk up is A and B, and then our first true note is D, no surprise there. D, E passing note going into F sharp, E, D, E, D, B, A. A lot of passing notes. Again, we can use any note inside of the D major scale. If we're just moving around, we can use any of those seven notes. But if we're hanging out, clear notes, half notes, whole notes, tied notes, those notes should be chord tones if they're going to linger over the top of a chord. Take a look when we get to uh, measure oh, four. We go to G major, notice we've got B as the downbeat note there. And then uh, we keep moving on. Now I put some interesting slash chord symbols that you'll see up there. Don't worry about that. We'll tackle that next month. B, A, F sharp, A. So we've got some G's there, we've got some D's there, we've got some B minor, E minor. Now as we go further, going into page two, let's take a look right where it gets syncopated. Right there at the top of page two, rather. So we're back in D again, D, E, F sharp, E, D, B, A. It pretty much is the same layout as page one, only the rhythm is changing. So not too much different there to look for. 
But when we start looking at uh, the middle of each of these pages where you see the F sharp minor, the E minor slash chord, the B minor slash chord, those minor chords, you'll notice that there isn't a whole bunch of change going on with the melody. So you might ask yourself, well, shouldn't these be different notes if they're going with different chords? Not necessarily, because sometimes you end up with something called a relative chord. In this case, the relative minor. Every major chord has a relative minor chord. Every major key has a relative minor key as well. So what you can do to find this is to go to your scale, whatever key you're on, or key you're in, in this case D major, and D is the major Right? So the relative minor to D major is going to be B minor. That's the sixth note of the D major scale. So whatever scale you're in, or whatever key you're in, uh, start off with that major and then go to the sixth note, and that's going to be the relative minor. The relative minor chord and the major chord related there, they share the exact same notes. And your major and minor related keys share the same key signature. So if you're looking down at the melody and you're seeing these notes, and they look like they should be for major chords, they also very well could be for minor chords as well. And if you find yourself doing some arranging where all you've got is a melody, a lead sheet, and nothing else, if you feel like something's missing, you might want to revisit some of your major chords and your melody areas and try playing the relative minor chord. And once again, to find the relative minor of whatever you're looking at, whatever chord it is, if it's a major chord, find that, those seven notes for that key signature and then go to the sixth note to find out what the minor is. So that if you do see notes that suggest a major chord, but your major chord isn't flying, then play the relative minor over those notes and you more than likely will find out that that is the ticket. All right. So we're going to come back and we're going to really look closely at all of these tunes next month. Thank you guys so much for joining me and thank you to my patrons for being there for me every day and making Dulce America possible. I just love you guys so much. We're going to be back with a lot more just around the corner. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you soon.